So in the last few videos, we've derived an expression for the absorption spectra. And now we'd actually like to compute some numbers because we're engineers at the end of the day, that's what we're gonna be doing. Um, and so we're gonna be doing the example absorption spectra for gallium arsenide uh, near the band edge. So the problem is this, uh, calculate the absorption spectra or calculate the absorption coefficient alpha at 0.1 electron volts above the band edge of gallium arsenide, and then sketch out a rough plot, or sketch out a plot. And for gallium arsenide, the parameters that we're gonna be using are the band gap should be 1.424 electron volts, and this is at uh, this is at roughly 300 Kelvin. Uh, the refractive index should be about 3.62. EP is going to be 25.7 electron volts. The electron mass is 0.067 times our free electron mass. The whole mass is 0.5 times the free electron mass. And so that's all we need to calculate the absorption spectra. And uh, in addition to our formula for the absorption spectra, so it's just this parameter, which I've been calling AP, uh, and this is dependent on EP and the refractive index, multiplied by the reduced density of states as a function of the photon energy divided by the photon energy. And so the first order of business is just to calculate this AP. And we know that AP from the previous video is just equal to pi Q squared eta naught h bar ep over uh, 6 times the refractive index times the electron the free electron mass and the hardest part about calculating these things is dealing with the units so dealing with the units uh, now i don't deal with units anymore uh, i use mathematica's uh, quantity package or i use their quantity uh, feature and it's absolutely wonderful. Uh, maybe I'll make another another video on it sometime. So I don't deal with units. I just have uh, computers deal with that for me. But if you have to calculate this stuff uh, by hand, base SI units, uh, base SI units are your best friend. Uh, they will never lead you astray. And if you plug stuff in and you know the quantity you're expecting, and in this case it's going to be uh, energy squared or joule squared in SI units. Uh, times meter squared. Uh, and so if you plug all of these values in, you'll just get the AP is equal to uh, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 58 uh, meter squared joule squared. And so you can see because of the massive uh, magnitudes we're dealing with, how easy it is to uh, to make an error that gives that causes you to be off by like 10 or 10 orders of magnitude. Uh, when I was first calculating this, uh, for the first time I calculated it, I was off by 100 orders of magnitude. Uh, the second time I was off by 10, and the third time I got it correct. Now, if you've got a really nice units conversion package like Mathematica's Quantity, uh, you can very quickly change this answer into uh, the Lord's units, or 2.6 times 10 to the minus 16 uh, centimeters squared EV squared. And so now to calculate this term on the right hand side, all we need to do is plug in uh, E photon is just equal to our band gap uh, plus 0.1 electron volts. And so if you do that uh, and you evaluate the reduced density of states, um, first of all, the reduced mass, uh, the reduced mass you should calculate to be about 0.059 times the free electron mass. And that's just using the relation uh, that the reduce or the definition of the reduced mass it's just one over the electron mass plus one of the whole mass uh, the inverse of that and so if you plug in the value uh, eg plus 0.1 ev into this gr uh, our reduced density of states of e photon divided by oh goodness what is that no uh, divided by e photon uh, and you plug this in with the reduced mass you should get a value of, uh, in SI units, 7.9 times 10 to the 62 uh, meter cubed, or meter uh, minus three, joule minus two. 
And so the units of the density of states, again, are per volume per energy. So that's the meter to the minus three, joule to the minus one, and then we're dividing by another energy. And in uh, nicer units for what we're dealing with, this is 2.03 times 10 to the 19 uh, centimeter cubed, or per centimeter cubed uh, per electron volt squared. And now multiplying these two quantities that we calculated together, so AP uh, times GR at the photon energy that we're evaluating divided by the photon energy, uh, you should get, if you plugged in about 0.1 electron volts above the band edge, uh, about 5270 per centimeter. So this is your absorption coefficient alpha. This is our prediction for gallium arsenide uh, at 0.1 electron volts above band edge, so above band edge. And if you actually look up uh, a, an absorption spectra for gallium arsenide, so if you actually look up online an absorption spectra, you'll notice that we're off by about a factor of two, which might be uh, a little disappointing, but also kind of impressive because all we used uh, was pure theory to get this, as well as uh, a couple material parameters. So our refractive index, EP, uh, and the masses of the electron and hole and so on. But these are liable to vary uh, from sample to sample. So it's totally reasonable that uh, we get a factor of, maybe not a factor of two difference, but uh, certainly, uh, certainly some difference between our predicted values and the actual values. Uh, the other reason is uh, we neglected a couple things. So we neglected the effects of what are called excitons, and we've also neglected this thing called Sommerfield enhancement. Uh, and these will both tend to increase the absorption spectra uh, or the absorption coefficient values at, uh, at a range of energies. And we might do future videos on these. So now let's sketch out the absorption spectra. So we know the, uh, and let's sketch it from zero to 0.1 electron volts, or let's sketch it from uh, zero EV to our band gap, which is about 1.4 EV or 1.42 EV, uh, and then to 1.52 EV. So that's uh, our band, uh, this, is, this is our band gap, and this is our band gap plus 0.1 EV. So we know at the band gap plus 0.1 EV, we know the value, it's 5270 inverse centimeters. So we can just draw a point. So we can draw a point that corresponds to that location. Uh, and we know that the absorption spectra up to that point, so from a photon energy of zero EV to the band gap, it should be zero because our density of states in this region, uh, our density of states in this region is zero. This is in the forbidden region uh, between the conduction band and the valence band where there are no states. So up to the bandage, uh, our absorption coefficient should be zero. And then once it hits the bandage, it starts to look kind of like this square root shape. So it starts to look kind of like this. And if we zoom in, let's zoom in on this region and just draw this region below. Um, so if we zoom in on that region from our band edge to EG plus 0.1 EV, we'll still get uh, 15, or 5270 inverse centimeters will be our final point. And then it'll look roughly like this square root shape. So it'll, it'll initially have a very large derivative and then it'll kind of smooth out as you get to higher and higher energies. And so this is roughly what the absorption spectra should look like. And you can plot it on a computer. So you can plot it on a computer um, as a function of E photon, our photon energy. And you'll, you should get something that looks roughly like this. And so that was our example video on calculating the absorption coefficient. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions or comments, also feel free to post them down below. Uh, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.